Now that we have added basic styles with CSS, we will continue working with it to improve the layout of our site. One of the biggest challenges for a web developer in current times is designing for screens that come in many sizes and resolutions. Web layouts can be categorized three ways, fixed, fluid, and elastic. Fixed layouts are easiest to design. They are set to a particular screen resolution and you can design much like you would for a printed document. But the fixed size can be a problem. If a user screen is wider than your settings, they will get a lot of white space. If a user screen is smaller, they will have to scroll back and forth to see everything. It also doesn't adjust well to different font settings. I'm sure we have all visited a website on our phones that has used fixed layouts that forced us to scroll or zoom in to be able to read it. Fluid layouts are often a better choice. They change with the resolution of the screen. The problem with fluid layouts is that it can be difficult to design and it may look different on different sized screens. You can use a hybrid of the two to find the right mix between adaptability and simplicity. Another great option is the elastic layout. This sets every size with relative measurements. Using the EM, we will size everything relative to the default font size. So let's look at a setting element sizes. Basic width and height can be added to most elements. You can use fixed or relative measures on any of them. You can also use a min or max width or height. This might be useful if you don't want an object to stretch all the way across a large screen. Lines of text can be difficult to read like that. It also could be useful to specify minimum sizes for some objects that would be difficult to see if they were too small. Getting elements to move around each other can be done with a float. Objects will stack one under the other down a page. If you want text to wrap around your images or two elements to display side by side, then float is how you accomplish that. You can float left or right. You cannot float center. You can flip multiple items to the left to get them to line up horizontally. On a large screen, it might look like this, but a smaller one might be put them this way. The float helps the fluidity of your design adjust to different screens. Sometimes you do not want an element to wrap around another. You can accomplish that with a clear. This will prevent your element from displaying until after any floated elements. You can use left to clear after there are no elements in the left margin, right to clear after there are no elements in the right margin, or both to place an element after both margins have no floated elements. Another way to align elements is with text align. Text align allows left, right, and center. Before HTML5, many developers use this as a way to get around there not being a float center. They would put an image inside a P tag and add the text align property to it. You may still see this quite frequently, but you should learn to do it the correct way with HTML5. This is done by setting your margin to auto. The CSS box model helps you with spacing. Imagine your content as a box. Around that is padding. That is the spacing between your content and the border. Between the border and the other elements is the margin. If you have no border, you could choose to to use margin or padding until no difference between the results. But it is a good idea to use the correct property so that your styles continue to match up as you make changes over time. Each block element on your page four sides, top, right, bottom, and left. Any style added to these sides, such as margins, padding, and borders must be applied in that order. They go clockwise starting from the top, but sometimes it can be hard to remember if it is clockwise or counterclockwise or where the starting point is. To remember the order, I use the word trouble. I keep myself out of trouble by remembering the letters TRBL in trouble. You can specify margins separately with top, right, bottom, and left. You can also use CSS shorthand and put them all in one style. Remember trouble to keep them in order. You can also specify the same margin on all four sides with just one margin. You can do the equivalent with padding, and border works the same way. We briefly discussed borders when we removed a border from an image, but there are many more things you can do with a border.
You can change the width of the border, or the color, or the style. With the style, you have several options. Dotted, dashed, solid, double, groove, ridge, inset, outset, or none. Like many other properties, borders have a shorthand version as well. The correct order is width, style, color. You can also round your borders with the border radius property. You can give a text element a little flair. You can create your own button by rounding the corners of an element. You can even make circles or combine rounded elements to make other shapes. Border radius gives you lots of options to prevent you from having to stick with boring squares and rectangles all the time. What happens when the text does not fit in the space you need it to be in? You add a scroll bar. This is done with the overflow property. Scroll will add scroll bars no matter what size the element is. Auto will add scroll bars only if needed. You can also use hidden to force the browser to hide any extra parts of the element that do not fit. There may be times in which you want to hide part of an image. You can use the clip property to do this. You may be asking, why wouldn't I just crop the image before putting it on my site? You would use this when you want an image to be partially hidden only some of the time. For example, if you wanted your user to hover over the G here and the entire logo appears. To add this feature to your figure, use the clip property and define the shape. At this time, rectangle is the only option. Then insert the coordinates. You would get these the same as you did on your image maps. Clip can only be used with an absolute position. Then insert a style for when you hover over the figure. Use the clip property again, but set it to auto. Now your users can hover over the small part of the image and the entire image appears. Mastering a few CSS tricks like the ones you have learned in this lesson can help your layouts go from looking amateur to professional very quickly.